Kingdom Building. If you can, if you if you can't see the screen well, then I want you to go to uh, in your scriptures, go to Genesis twenty nine. Genesis twenty nine, and Shalom for those online. Uh, no Hebrew left behind. I know that we've been uh, we missed a few weeks, but we're coming back with this. Our objective is to make sure that all of us come to the fullness of the faith, that we don't leave nobody behind, that we understand exactly who we are and how to prove ourselves because we don't want to look for fans we want to look for people that is powerful in the understanding of who they are and the development of the scripture so we welcome you being among us um, in this class and today we're going to learn about the mothers of Israel and how the nation was born. We have to know, I know a lot of times we look at a 12 tribe chart and y'all know we do not subscribe to that, but at least they did the due diligence to try to find out where they came from and where they at today. Uh, but in the scriptures, you always have to go uh, go back to who you are, like, like uh, I believe it's Marcus Garvey said, the people that doesn't um, know who they are or where they're from is like a tree without roots. So we're going into our understanding of who we are. Y'all can hear me? I want to make sure everybody can hear me. Everybody can hear me? Yes, we saying yes. Okay, they saying yes, sir. All right, here we go. Genesis 29. And let's read. It says, Genesis 29, verse 1. Let's learn about the matriarchs of our lineage and how we came to be. We're going to learn who the matriarchs are, how many different women we came from. We're going to learn... Um, Who's the oldest? Who's the youngest? We don't want to leave no stone unturned because a lot of times we look at this and say, you know, well, let's learn about something deep. And they ask you, well, where do you go to find out where the 12 tribes of Israel come from? And you end up going to Genesis 10 or Genesis 9. We have to know these things so we can they go back to understanding ourselves. And you're going to see some stuff. <laughs> in the midst of this. All right, here we go. Anybody want to start off reading this here? What, 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 what verse? We Genesis 29, verse 1. We'll let Mother uh, start us off. <laughs> Everybody here don't read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth, in his place. Keep going. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. Haran are we. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban the son of Nahor? Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, is it yet high day? Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered, 
together, water ye the sheep and go and feed them. And he said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we watered the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, and she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Yaakov kissed Rachel uh -oh. and lifted up his voice and wept. Mm. And Yaakov told Rachel that he was her father's brother mm -hmm. and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. Mm. Let's keep going. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, Yaakov's, his sister's son, that he ran and met him, embraced him, and kissed him, and bought, brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. Mm -hmm. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. Notice that he said he called him his bone and his flesh. Where, where, where else have we seen that? Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Mm, so what is, what is he saying when he said, you are my bone and my flesh? You are my, my, you're my heritage. My heritage. Mm -hmm. My heritage. And that's just even how we should even communicate with each other. Because we, we are each other's bone and flesh. We ain't each other's rib now. Your wife is your rib, but we are family. Mm -hmm. So I can look at Gaboria. I can look at Jonathan. I can look at Kimmy. I can look at a mother Imuna and say, you are my bone and you are my flesh. Mm -hmm. Saying that we are all connected. That is a um, Hebrew idiom to say that we are family. It means the covenant. That, yeah, covenant. I'm here too. Please. Oh, and right. <laughs> my bone and my flesh just Thank came you. up and said she is. <laughs> I'm not going to get this. And everybody <laughs> else in the back. <laughs> they all here because of who else here? The uh, uh, Midas. Midas in the back room. My bone and my flesh back there in the back too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's, I think that's something that we should even start saying with each other. Even in greeting each other, behold my bone and my flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright, let's keep reading. And we stopped on verse 14. 14. And Laban said unto Yaakov, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Mm. Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. How many daughters he had? Two daughters. How many daughters he had? Two. All right. Now let's see what the name of these daughters are. Because these daughters are our what? Mothers. 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 Or matriarch. I don't know what you were going to say. All right. Let's read it. The name of the elder was Leah. And the name of the younger was Rachel. So the oldest mother is who? Leah. Leah. And then... Rachel. Rachel, which is who are their father? Laban. Which is the brother of who? Rebecca. According to Jacob. Rebecca. Rebecca. Mm -hmm. So Laban is Rebecca's brother. Mm -hmm. Laban has two daughters named who? Leah and Rachel. Right. Okay. Now, who did Jacob kiss? Rachel. So his heart was more for who? Rachel. All right. All right. <laughs> So let's keep reading. Verse 17. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. So what does that tender-eyed mean? Cross-eyed. She had a lazy eye. <laughs> <laughs> Her eye was a little weary. Weak, weak eye. Y'all, I'm going to show you. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the, uh, show it to you. What tender mean? 
is uh, from Strong's 87390 Rock. And it says, tender, soft, faint-hearted, one week. Biblical uh, outline. I just went into a blue letter Bible. Tender, soft, delicate, or weak. So it says that she was tender. Literally and frequently by implication, she had a weak eye. Weak, okay. So her eye was a little drifty. Just it drifted a little bit. It's all right. That's our mama. That's all right. That is our mama. She Yahoo the mama. She Yahoo the mama. <laughs> she, so she, she, it's all right for to have a little weary eye. I ain't no telling what, what she had to be through, right? But look at how the scriptures. Let me go back. How did Jacob miss that? <laughs> was that dark? <laughs> okay, we go. We go go. <laughs> <laughs> you go back to see how why, how he missed it. Customary how he missed it because he wasn't able to look right at her face. Just to say, I lay a missed that out. Okay, so let's read Genesis twenty nine and seventeen again. Let's read that. Leo was tender eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well favored. Mm. And Yaakov loved Rachel mm. and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, mm. thy younger daughter. So why did he say that? Why did he say he's going to serve him seven years? What did we just read before that Laban asked that he said, I'm going to serve you seven years for her? Well, wages. 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 He said, I can't allow you to serve me for nothing. You bone of my uh, bone. You my bone and you my flesh. So he said, well, what I'm going to do I'm going to serve you for Rachel. Like I'm going to pay a diary for Rachel in order to become my wife. As I'm preparing to be her husband. And, and this almost is almost like the knocking at the door ceremony. Mm -hmm. You see that? Where he had to talk to the father. The father and him create a type of agreement in order for him to be able to take Rachel as his wife, right? Mm -hmm. And she received because she, she wanted him. So when Laban and Rachel agreed, that set the precedent for Rachel to become um, Jacob's wife. It wasn't that he just grabbed her and slept with her. Mm -hmm. There was an order to these things. Mm -hmm. So we can get out of our mind that time like how it was going on in Israel, that sex is marriage. Hmm. No, it's order to it. It's things that has to be established. My phone finished out. Go ahead. Do you have a hook? It's on the yes, floor. Yes, ma'am. Um, the significance of seven years, is is that to where, if you're like in danger? Say it again, Mom. Uh, the significance of seven years, why he said seven years? He chose seven years. Yes. Would that be significant to the, uh, you know, like indentured type? Of right, thing? right. And then after seven years, you can walk You go away. free. Right, right. You see all those principles mm -hmm. echoed before we even see it uh, laid out um, as a law for a nation. We see it already happening. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Okay. So let's keep reading. Uh, we have verse 18. Oh, we read that. Okay. All right, let's read 19. Okay. And Levon said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him to be a few days for the love he had. To so how is he loving this woman like this now? He ain't really like he ain't, he ain't really had a long time to be with her. A few days. A few days. What's up? What's going on with Jacob? Y'all talk to me and think about us. What's going on with our father? He didn't seen this woman a few days, and now he he loved her, ready to work seven years for. Her. I mean, she she was good looking. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, she was fine. She, she was Come get him. <laughs> 
So that, that seven years, he said it ain't seen but, but a few days for him. But he loved her because he wept. Mm. You know, when he saw her first, he loved her. He had a love for her that was sent by you who loved him. Mm. Because he wept. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just a lustful thing no. that he was going through. Mm -hmm. But it's something that he felt like he had found. Because, uh, you know, the scriptures don't detail everything. It could have been right. something that the Most High had placed in his spirit right. to let him know, I'm going to give you a wife when you do this. Right? Mm -hmm. But he said he loved her. And he said that those seven years went but a few days. <laughs> Well, he also had seven years to actually get to know her, too, though. Right. Good point. Because he couldn't have her uh, before those seven years. Right. And it couldn't have been lust because if he found her unattractive just besides her face, he would have been like, never mind. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. he, he'd been out in seven years and he was like, can we edit this contract because she's trash. Right. 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 That's good. <laughs> That's good. So, I mean, do y'all brothers think y'all find some? Woman that y'all will be willing to work for for seven years? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, okay, good morning, okay. You will work seven years for that woman? Definitely. All right. He said it's in his forefathers. <laughs> he got it. It's in your bloodline. Yeah, it's in the blood. Right, we got one over here quiet. <laughs> Keep it 100, man. I need you. I need you. I need you. Hallelujah. She got to prove herself when you get to working for us. All right. Got to be nothing else to do. All right, we want you to read verse uh, 21. Uh, then your code said to Laban, give me my wife, for my days are completed. Let me go into her. Hold on, because I, let me, I need to myself. I guess the people's going here. Sorry. And I want you to say it how he might would have said that. Okay. Then give me my wife, boy. It looked like okay. he had a little fire with it. Hey, bro. <laughs> Then your code said to Laban, give me my wife. <laughs> my days are completed and let me go into her. And Laban gathered all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to be in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to your code. And he went into her. And Laban gave his female servant Zilpha to his daughter Leah as a female servant. And in the morning when it came to be that see it was Leah, so he said to Laban, what is this that you have done to me? Was it not for Raquel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? Now, what happened? How was he not able to recognize that it was uh, Leah rather than Rachel? Well, that's just up for, for debate. Anybody can throw it in there. Jonathan, that's it. Right, because if he could see her completely in her fullness, he ought to should, should have been and looked in her eyes. Right, but notice it said it came down to evening, evening when they went in that chamber. Evening. So what might have she had been during the day and during that feast that he didn't know that it was her? Veiled. 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 But them eyes, never mind. <laughs> but no, but she might have had her whole face veiled. Right. I was, right. was going to say that. Okay. She had to have a whole face there because he, he probably, you know, yeah, but how did they keep this is what here's my thing go ahead Raquel was aware that this seven years was supposed to be for her true mm -hmm. now if I love you I'm I'm gonna bust my sister upside my head you're not gonna marry you're not gonna go lay down with my man we've been together seven years sis we betrothed <laughs> something to Rachel. He probably hit her and like, you know. Yeah, he could have, he could have, well, it had to be something. Mm -hmm. And this what, um, this is speculation. Mm -hmm. It had to be something because how could um, Rachel sit and know that this is their wedding feast, mm -hmm. right? 
and then allow Leia at evening when Rachel know what evening means after we done done the feast. There got to be some consummation. Yes. So if I ain't being consummated, then what's happening? Where he at? Mm -hmm. right? right? Now, let's think about this. This is just speculation again. What if they had a tradition where he had to choose the right woman? Mm -hmm. Where the sisters were veiled. Mm -hmm. And Rachel knew she wasn't chose, but she couldn't say nothing according to their tradition. But he didn't find out to after he laid with her that he picked the wrong oh, woman. Therefore, wow. Rachel could do nothing because she didn't get choosed oh. during the wedding ceremony because both was veiled. You see this practice still over there on the continent today so in Africa. What we did during the wedding feast that you have to choose the right bride. Yes. But different cultures have different consequences. That's the only way I could thank her not saying nothing. Plus, her dad's a church there. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, too. I mean, she is too now. She is too. That's where she got from, though. <laughs> I mean, but I would say here's like if she. I would say that could be the case too, but he might have had tricked her as well. And then you have to think about it like there's order in culture, so he right. may have even put it to her like she is the younger sister. And mm -hmm. so her, mm -hmm. that might be the only way her sister, because she well, got to lazy eyes that's what for says. her to get married. That's going to come up there. Yes, right? So, mm -hmm. so right. that might have been his only right, because ain't no man was choosing the lady with the with mm -hmm. sleepy eyes. They just wasn't. <laughs> so, so maybe he said, look, you're going to have to let your sister, you're going to have to bite this book. She the oldest. get with him. Right. Yeah. And then you just That's another good point. And then yeah. she we know that our mother Rachel had a compassionate heart because we see the things that she goes through to protect the seed. Mm -hmm. So even in her mm -hmm. doing the stealing of the idols and doing whatever, right. all of it was to protect the seed and the choice that she had made her choice to to worry Yaakov. So maybe she he talked her into it. it was like, look, you know, you, you know your sister. Right. And you know right. he'll work seven more years. So. Right. Right. <laughs> that, that could have been all the plan. But all right, let me ask y'all this. Why would the Most High allow it? Mm. Now, I want y'all to think. Mm. To think. Why would he allow that? Based on, I'm, I'm going to throw you what I'm trying to say. Based off your cold path. You read what you sow. What did Yaakov do? Him and his mama. He took the tree. Ah, he took the and tripped on Papa's son. And you never know when it's coming back. And it always comes way worse. But the proof is also that the Most High, like our will and how we feel really don't matter to the most high mm -hmm. because he still even allowed Leia to be the mother of the birthright. Like right. she gave yes. birth right. to Hamashia essentially. Right. So he allowed her to yeah. have that to that uh We're gonna show we're gonna see his favor that he had up on Leia. Right. But it show you that the, the you you might get away but you don't get by with the most high. Mm -hmm. He's going to tighten you up, but then he's still a work his overall purpose mm -hmm. in your rebuke. Right. If you're able to see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Good, good. So where, where we at? Uh, we at? Some 30. Some. Yeah, I think 25. Well, I think 26 now, right? Yeah. Your, your body reads a little different, so. 26. All right. Okay. And Layla said, is it not done this way in our place to give the younger before the firstborn? There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Complete the week of this one, then we give you this one too. For the service which you shall serve with me still another seven years. And Yaakov did so and completed her week. Then he gave him to his daughter Raquel too as, a, as wife. And Laban gave his female servant Bilhah to his daughter Raquel as a female servant. So now... We know that he have how many daughters? Two. Two. Two daughters. And each daughter has a handmaiden. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all remember, uh, if you go up to verse 24, let's get what Leah's handmaid name? Zilpah. All right. And then now what is Rachel's handmaid name? Zilpah. Zilpah. All right. So when they got married, he gave them a handmaiden, right, to aid them in their, in their um, to serve Rachel and to serve Leah. Mother Malaka said it's also part of Eastern culture that they gave them a handmaid in the case that they were barren. So that they could give oh. a child mm -hmm. to the husband if they couldn't have a baby. Right, that's good too. Most definitely. Most definitely we can see that. Because we're going to see that uh, play out. Exactly. All right, so let's let's keep going. Where we at? 30. 30. All right. It's, it's Gaboriel's turn. Okay. It's Gaboriel's turn? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right. And he went in also into Rachel. And he loved also Rachel more than Leah. Mm. And served with him yet seven other years. Mm. And when Yahuwah saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Rachel was bearing. Mm -hmm. All right, so we see that Leah is dealing with what spirit now? Bitterness. Not just bitterness, but what's the first spirit she's dealing with? Rejection. 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 Because she's, she wasn't even the first chosen. Right. She had to be tricked into being somebody. Why? How do you think that made her feel? Yeah. Now, notice when we experience rejection, what is one of the things that we seek after? Attention. 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 Validation. Validation. Acceptance. That's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. Acceptance. So now we're going to see that most of Leah's life, she's seeking for acceptance. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that even play out in the sons, even our tribe, Judah, that's one of the main things that we deal with as a as a uh, tribe of people. Rejection. Mm -hmm. And we seek what? Acceptance. 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 From the point of being broken down in this nation mm -hmm. to your family's dynamics. That's one thing that we'll learn from and we see where we where the inception of it came from, from our mother. And the situation with the father, which is the same thing that happens today in a broken home situation. Because the mother and the father is not together. It's not when it brings rejection to the children. Now they seek for validation. Now they seek for acceptance. That in turn make, can make them bitter. You see what I'm saying? All right. So this is why I always say you're not just fighting your own circumstances, you're fighting mm -hmm. generational things that has been on our lineage. And the only way that we can become free is we what? Identify it. We see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let's, you got something? Someone on the Zoom was asking, uh, saying there's an echo, asking if we can mute it. I don't know if that's in uh, yeah. Okay, we good? All right, so uh, let's keep reading. Is it still my turn? Yeah. yeah. All right. And when Yahweh saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son. And she called his name Reuben. So what grace did the Most High, he looked at. That's the beautiful thing about the Most High. You know how much stuff was going on in the world at that time? Mm. Just think about it. The Most High has to govern the whole world. Just think about that. And he's so gracious and kind and compassionate that he gonna look specifically at what Leah going through. Mm -hmm. And because he felt like she was hated by her husband, he loved her. Mm -hmm. And opened her womb. Mm -hmm. So she can have acceptance of him. But she's gonna continuously look for acceptance of her husband and don't realize that he accepted her himself until she get to that fourth son. Now watch. Let's read. Um, so Leah conceived and bore a son and she called his name who? Reuben. So how many daughters uh, how many uh, daughters did Laban have? Two. Two. What were their names? Rachel, Rachel and Leah. Did they have handmaidens? Yes. yes. Remember the handmaiden name? What was Leah's handmaiden? Zipha. Zipha. What was Rachel's handmaid? 
Right. So now who has the firstborn son? Leah. Leah. Why did she have the firstborn son? Because who had compassion on her? You. And he did what to her womb? Open. And gave her her son, Reuben. Mm -hmm. So Reuben is our eldest who? Brother. Right? Yes. He's the firstborn. All right, keep reading. For she said, Surely Yahuwah hath looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. Hmm. So with her birthing of Reuben, she said, The most high that looked on my affliction, but now my husband will love me. Now it's right to want to be loved by your husband. Mm -hmm. It's right. Right? Yeah. Okay, now it's, it's on you, uh, gentlemen. Verse uh, 33. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Because Yahuwah hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. All right, so now we got Reuben being the uh, firstborn. And who's the next one? Simeon. Simeon. What's our mother's name? Leah. Leah. And who? Zilpah. Rachel. Who used to say the book? Zilpah. No, our mothers are Rachel. And Bill. Oh, and Leah. And Leah. Who is Leah's uh, handmaiden? Bill. Zilpah. Zilpah. And who is uh, Leah's, I mean, Rachel's handmaiden? Bill. Bill. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, the first son is Simeon. And the next son after that is who? I mean, the firstborn son is uh, Reuben, Reuben, and the next son after that is who? Simeon. Who is their mother? Leah. There we go. Verse 34. And she conceived... Oh, I ain't supposed to read that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me. Notice what her focus wow. continuously is. She's continuously looking for that. Except, listen, listen, man. I done bore you two children. The most high that opened my womb. Now I got a third son. First, he looked, most high looked on my affliction with Reuben, and so now my husband would love me. She's saying that. Then the second time, he heard that my husband hated me, so he gave me Simeon. Now I got another son, and she conceived again, and now this time my husband, now she said, now my husband will really be joined unto me. What is she saying right there? That the husband would be joined unto her. Ain't they already married? Then they already become one? Love. 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 Keep going. Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, what's his name called? Levi. All right. So we got, what's the oldest son? Reuben. That's one under that? Simeon. That's one under that? Levi. Levi. Who their mother? Leah. All right. And what was Leah seeking through all these sons? Acceptance. 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 All right. Now go to, uh, yeah, verse 35. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise Yahuwah. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. So now, what do we notice different about Leah at this moment? Her focus shifts. Huh? Her focus did what? Shifted. Shifted. Right, and got focused on who? Yahuwah. Praise. And she's, Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Most High. Because now she. At this moment, she's not thinking about acceptance no more because now she knows who accepted her. Yeah. And what did it say she she left? Bearing. Bearing. So she ain't bearing no more to please him. Because she knows who she has been accepted by. Now I can name this son praise because now I done got into the fullness of what I supposed to do even through my son. So now we are birthed. Judah is birthed. In a shift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does that make Judah significant now than the other sons? Mm. She's no longer seeking acceptance. She's no longer seeking acceptance, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's seeking praise. She's seeking praise. 
All right. So she's more or less awakened to a, what who was the plan. Mm. That's good. So now when you see a shift in the lineages, notice that this is going to not make Judah a what? Because he's not like his brothers. brothers. This is going to make him a what? Kinsman. Kinsman. Redeemer. A redeemer. Mm -hmm. Which is going to make him a... This is why through Judah the redemption is happening now. Because now we ain't looking for acceptance no more. Now it in shift. Now through this lineage a Messiah can be born. That's going to redeem the rest of the bloodline before him and after him. Because now it's praise and now this son can be the leader of the tribes or the voice that calls out to all the other tribes. This is why Yaakov was able to say that now, according to uh, Genesis 49, that says that your brethren will praise you mm -hmm. because you was born in praise because now your mother then shifted. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's deep. That is deep. Mm -hmm. This piece of how for it, um, like the word says, the, the woman will be saved through child. Come on. Come on with it. It speaks to how important it is for the woman's role when it comes to her children because she sets the tone for what Yahuwah can do. That's right. Through a child. Through a lineage. Right. And that's how important. Well, that's so good you said that because that's how important the role of a mother is. Don't let nobody make you think that that's diminished, that there's nothing, that having babies is just... Uh, you need to be independent and have a, uh, a six-figure career where you miss the most important thing. Mm. Is it's only through you that children can be saved. Mm. Boy, that's a powerful role. Yes, yes. You see what I'm saying? Mm. But now, because of the shift of the mother, now the lineage can change. Now something has been, been birthed out of her. Right? So she left childbearing now. And now her focus was supposed to be the most high. Right? But we're going to see what happened as time go on. All right. Now let's go to Genesis 30. And we're going to start with uh, Kimmy. Read it. Can I ask one more question? Yes, ma'am. Is it because she acknowledged that, you know, the whole situation? Right. You can be, like, blind. to She's blind, these other three kids. Right. All of a sudden, she acknowledges what Yahuwah has done for her. Right. And she begins to praise him now. Hallelujah. You know, well, forget. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's forget um, uh, Yaakov. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just, I'm, I know what my role is. Exactly. Exactly. Not forget them, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I think that's why we had to come out of Western Eyes thinking, though, because. Right. It allows us to believe that the your joy in your marriage is built in your ability to feel fulfilled in the love or acceptance of another person. Right. And that's not to say that you should not have that. Right. That's just to say, especially in this particular circumstance, that her situation was not that. And though we seek to, you know, that our men would would be that way. Every situation is not going to make you feel loved. Right. But that doesn't mean there's no purpose in that relationship. Exactly. And so praise your hood that she was able to make it through four children and right. finally say, you know, hey, your hood has seen me and and uh and he has looked upon me favorably enough to even open my womb. That's it. See that's that's what she missed. And that's sometimes we do that. Mm-hmm. That we so focus on the problem that we can't look at how the most I have graced us yes. all around us. Because but but because our affections is set on a certain thing that we desire, that we have we have missed what he has already done. Notice this. The blessing is he's opening, and that's one of the greatest, highest honor. Yes. Of a woman in Eastern yes, culture yes. to bear a son. Yes. And you doing it, but you still looking at Rachel, envying her. And four it's, sons at that. Right. <laughs> He's gracing you with this. Mm -hmm. 
You see what I'm saying? But she's so focused on what her affections is set on that she missed how the both sides honoring her. Focus on your family. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, the, but they switch roles. <laughs> Huh? They end up switching roles too. Yeah. Because Raquel ends up in envying in her sister because she can't have children. Right. So she's not even able at that time to to sympathize with her sister's situation, knowing that she can't bear children to the same husband they both share. Right. So it's kind of like um, both women are are dealing with their own issues that. at the same time, and neither one of them is able to see the situation that right. her sister is in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it really could have pulled them together to push each other mm -hmm. through. But sometimes you can thank somebody that you're looking at it got it so good and you would diminish mm -hmm. what you have in hopes of wanting what they got. Mm -hmm. And not realizing that they on the other end suffering and could want what you got. And that's how House of Tongue players against each mm -hmm. other. Now that strife and that's envy against that person. Because you wanted what they have but don't realize that the enemy playing both sides. But you who had balanced the scales. Mm -hmm. He had balanced the scales in that situation because he allowed Leah to bear and he didn't allow Raquel to bear. Right. In order that she would receive the love, but she would receive the children. Right. And Yahuwah hates that just scales and he fell for his daughter that she could she could not receive the affection that she desired for her husband, so he gave her children right. in hopes that she would give him praise. Right. And for the same thing he gave Raquel, the affections of right. her husband, she might praise Yahuwah that she had a husband that treated her well, Right. but she desired children. She desired children. You see it? He's just jealous. He is. The whole time he has a plan. He's working it. <laughs> see, that's what we gotta get is <laughs> We got to learn how to let things play out. Mm -hmm. Just allow, even if stuff don't look 100%, just, this is what I learned. I have learned it. Mm -hmm. Just allow it to play out. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And at the end, I know I can't fail if I'm trusting him. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. I know I ain't going to fall on my face. Yes. So I'm not going to put more pressure on it. I just got, when, I look, when you look at these scriptures, and you look at what our our uh, patriots and matriarchs been through, and you really compare, you know, our situation to theirs. That's why he have extreme situations in these scriptures. But when you look at it, man, we at an advantage because we able to see it, see it from beginning to end, mm -hmm. see things play out. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's imperative to allow the Most High. Just because what you see ain't what you saw based off what He have gave you. Doesn't mean that everything gonna crumble. So that's why you gotta you gotta tell this mind, hey, shut up. No, no, no. You ain't gonna make me worry. You ain't gonna make me fear. You ain't gonna make me do all this. I'm trusting in the most high and leaving out of my own understanding. Alright, let's go. Genesis 30 and 1. Who turned? Kimmy. <laughs> <laughs> that's thanks. It wasn't You're gonna make sure you don't get away. <laughs> He said that was so basic. <laughs> and when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. She what? Envied her sister. But she got the love. No, watch this, y'all. Who is Rachel children down the line? Benjamin and right. Joseph. Joseph. Notice. What happened between the children mm. later on? Yes. Who Ooh. is envying each other and fighting each other in the bloodline? Oh, Judah, and, and Judah and Judah and Ephraim. And right. right. So we see even oh, and, and, you see it? Yeah. There it is. <laughs> but where did it start? With the, With mothers. the mothers. Knowing that the most I said at the end, according to Ezekiel 37, I'm going to take the strife and the envy between Ephraim and Judah away. Wow. But they both got the opportunity to be kinsmen redeemers. Right. Right. You made a situation where she would bear a kinsman redeemer as well. Mm -hmm. You see his hand? Mm. But we wow. see how these things can happen generationally. Mm -hmm. We saying this, y'all. Mm -hmm. How it shows up in the bloodline. How we got to be careful. Yes. 
Let's keep going. Man, this is this something. Ain't this something? Yeah. This and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. <laughs> so she gonna look at him and say, Bro, <laughs> hey, what you doing? Put, I need a, I need some bread in my oven. She putting it on him like, bro, hey, some you ain't doing right. Hey, <laughs> you got to do something right. Because I'm supposed to be having a baby. Ain't no wrong. She said, ain't no wrong with me. Give me a baby or I'm going to die. That's what that envy does. All right, keep going. And Jacob's anger was kindled against He <laughs> said, wait a minute, woman. What you mean? You see these babies I'm making over here? Ain't nothing wrong with me. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going. <laughs> and he said. And but y'all see how this this is a black family. <laughs> you see it. This is this is really a black family. Be to be be real. All right, keep going. And he said, "Am I in Elstead, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb?" Mm. And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. All right. So now she's, we got four boys on the other side, which is, who is the oldest? Leah. No, the boys. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry mama. You're right now, but who's the oldest? Reuben? Reuben. Reuben. After Reuben is who? Simeon. After Simeon is who? Levi. After Levi, Levi. Levi is who? Yeah. Who they mother? Leah. Leah, right? So now over here we got Rachel, right? And now Rachel can't have children, so she's going to give her husband Bilhah, right? So now let's keep reading and see what Bilhah produces. <laughs> and she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, to, to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. All right. And Rachel said, El hath judged me. And hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. All right. So now Bilhah has um, birthed for Rachel Dan, saying that the Most High has judged me. What we got? I have a question. Okay. And this is just kind of me looking at the the cyclical nature of the situation, because I do understand this is Eastern Eastern culture, and I just said that they would give the women to bear children right. as their child. But when the word continues to go forward, Bilhah is still Dan's mother. The word never changed. When your handmaid gave birth to a son and it's mm -hmm. supposed to be your child, that was now your child. Mm -hmm. She would just nurse the baby. But as the lineage goes on, Yahuwah does not call that Raquel's baby. He right. calls it Bilhah's baby. And just like our foremother, when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael, she was supposed to be Ishmael's mother. Right. But Hagar was his mother. Right. And so I'm thinking, uh, this is my question, mm -hmm. are these people not necessarily, not them, not of the promise, but the only reason why Dan was even really a part of the lineage is because of who his father was. And you have to have a, a Judas. Mm -hmm. Like there's always got to be a hostile in right. place, and so because of who his mother was, he allowed her to bear a son that he might be the reckoning or the judgment right. of the brothers. Is right. that is that the right? In you can you can look at it that way. You can look at it that way. Because uh, it's the same thing that happened to Sarah and Abraham. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, they didn't really step out of the promise necessarily because in Sarah's mind. Since the promise was given to Abraham, she was doing the right thing right. by allowing him to have a son. She just knew he was supposed to have a son. She didn't know he was supposed to come out of her. Right, right. So, but the problem is, is when they're trying to help the Most High out. Right. It's always going to fall back in your face. Right. And see, this is what happened even with this. Because she birthed Dan, but we know what Dan did against us, right? And you'll see these things play. But that's a great point of what you said because that is how the most I end up reckoning it as far as where even though it was supposed to be Rachel's son, but it was really Belha's son. And, and Rachel, really, when she had her son, she, ain't, that was, she was just done with it. She really wasn't looking at Dan like that no more. But 
the most I always looked at, okay, now that's the mother you came out of. That's what was birthed out of you. And that's why he called Hagar uh, was the son, I mean, um, Ishmael was the son of the flesh, but then Isaac was the son of the promise. So anytime you're trying to help the most high out, it's going to, you're going to create something that never should have been, well, I ain't going to say you should have been created, but you're going to have some problems. Mm -hmm. So we see that. That's a good point, sis. Verse 5. Okay. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, El hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. Mm -hmm. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. Now look at her again. Great she, she wrestled with who? Sister. So now they got the spirit of what? Competition. Amongst each other. And she naming these children according to her, <laughs> her, her issue. Are the children really receiving love from Rachel? Her focus How do you think, okay, let's do it like this. How do you think Bill Hoff feels? Use. <laughs> there you go. Use. Like I ain't got no, I ain't got no dog in this fight. So you using me to be able to get back at your sister, to be able to say, cause of my body, now you got baby, now y'all over here fighting and fussing. Do you think she can disconnect with a child that came out of her bosom, that came out of her? Mm, I don't think so, but I don't, I don't necessarily believe that she felt used until she witness the situation because we are talking about ancient eastern culture where they were used to that is something they saw on a regular basis that the handmaid was not even really the mom. Mm -hmm. so i think like you said she can't really disconnect because she gave birth to this child but now she's with her child witnessing her child being used as a weapon right but that's the point of what we were saying the use part one the use from the perspective of being used by rachel in the sense to have the children, but the used part is being used in the middle of a war going on between two sisters. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. That's envy and fighting each other. Yeah. Now I'm in, I'm in the middle of it and being used as a anchor for Rachel against her. And body. <laughs> right. It's a body. So we see this is all this is going on, right? So now we have, all right, let's go over what we got. We got uh, Rachel's handmaiden, which his name is who? Bill. Bill huh? Who did she birth? Dan and Naphtali. Dan and Naphtali. Leah got who? Ruben. Ruben. Shimon. Shimon. All right. All right, so who? All right, Mama, it's back on you to read now. Okay, we're at. We have verse 30 9. 30 and 9. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zelpha's her maid and gave her Yaakov. Look at this. Like, okay. like you would have thought, come on, Leah. Ooh. Come on. But keep going. All right. And Zelpha, Leah's maid, bear Yaakov a son. And Leah said, a troop cometh. And she called oh. his name Gad. Mm. And Zelpha, Leah's maid, bear Yaakov a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And All right, All right. so we know Leah's sons, and we know that Rachel had her sons to Bilhah, which is who? Her image. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan, Dan and so Leah looks at that and gives her handmaiden to Jacob. What was her handmaiden name? Zelpha. And who did she have? Gad and Asher. <laughs> okay, so we see in this now. We are we see from there's division 
from the inception. From the beginning. This is even why the nation of Israel can't hardly even come together as even one now. You see what I'm saying? This is why it just, we got a lot of craziness. Then our father died, we messed around and messed up. Then we got a sword put on our lineage with Judah. Right? So, Leah going to know she left childbearing and going to say, oh, you going to give your your handmaiden some terror. Oh, Zephyr, come out. <laughs> Jacob, go into her. Now, what would be Leah's reason for doing this? She got children. She Why would you do that? That competition. That competition. Wow. All right, so now, now watch this. That happened. All right, who was reading? You was reading, Mother? Uh -huh. Go ahead. 14. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes. In the field. What is mandarin? Oh, oh what is mandarin? Let's look it up. Look it up? You're looking what y'all, what y'all, I'm going to pull it up. What do y'all believe it is? Gosh. All right, let's keep reading. Let's okay. keep reading and we'll look it up. And brought them unto his mother, Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, it is a small matter that thou hast taken my husband, and would thou take away my son's mandrakes also? <laughs> and Rachel said, Therefore he, sh he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. Mm. Get going. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come unto me. For surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lied with her that night. Now, well, no, he lied with her. Yeah, he lied with her uh, that night. So, what do we think they are? Another a woman? No, the man, the uh, mandrakes. Mandrakes. Son's mandrakes. All right, let's look at it. Are they berries or something? They are berries, but what do they berries do? We... <laughs> they be at gas oh. station sometimes. Oh. <laughs> they be at, at little, little stores. Oh, they get your hat. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, man. All right, so let's look at that. Oh, oh. keep on? No, no, oh. I, I, I done pulled it up. Mandrace. Okay. It's, it says, uh, do die, right? It's the Hebrew word for it. A love apple as a citing sexual desire and favoring procreation. So it's something to get you aroused sexually and get you ready to make you potent for procreation. Okay. Okay. This is why Rachel is like, tell your sons to bring them to me. She's like, you already took my husband. Now you trying to take my sons? Man, mandrakes? <laughs> we wildin' out here, y'all. All right, let's keep going. My son's Viagra? Yeah. Where we at? And, um, 70. And Yahuwah hearkened. Look like, hold on, look, look like uh, people online quiet tonight. <laughs> Ain't nobody said nothing. Y'all all right? <laughs> or do I got it on uh, mute? Y'all, y'all talking? Y'all trying to say something? Oh! I wonder why I can't. I, I can't hear y'all. Hold on a minute. Use your um, four fingers on the mouse pad and go up. My four finger, four finger on the mouth pad and go up. Don't hit him. Don't do that. Don't hit him. Look at you. Don't. You did that now. You really can't. <laughs> you don't do that. You did that. All right, y'all come in on some of this because I ain't hear nothing from y'all. Can you hear us? I can hear you now. What y'all think? Can we have more of a specific question? 
No. No. <laughs> I'm asking. I'm asking you. <laughs> Had we had some problems. Right? <laughs> okay, but specific question uh, in the sense of uh, what do what do how do y'all see this thing playing out as it relates to us today to what our mothers dealt with? Interpersonal like issues, like you said, rejection. We want to be accepted. I mean, there's things that that were there before they ever went into captivity. Right. Mm -hmm. That was in the bloodline. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You see it. Trying to put your confidence in the in the man Drake now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right, where we at? Seventeen. Seventeen. Let's go. And Yahuwah hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Yaakov, the fifth son. Oh, so she made another son that night. So he went ahead and used that man Drake. All right, and keep going. And Leah said. Yahuwah has given me my hire because I have given my maiden to my husband and she called his name Issachar. All right, now let's look at, let's look at um, Leah's children. Let's name them again. Who the oldest? We have Reuben. Reuben. Uh -huh. Simeon. Uh -huh. Simeon, Levi. Levi, and Judah. All right, now she has a fifth son. What is his name? Issachar. 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 All right, now her handmaiden was Zilpha, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, then who is Zilpha's son? Then, wait, wait. Zilpha. Gad. Gad, Gad and Asher. Asher. Right, and Bilhah was Rachel's handmaiden. Who was her son? Dan, Dan and Naphtali. Naphtali. Good, good. All right, let's keep going. And Leah conceived again. Look at Leah. Leah just, what well, tell you. <laughs> and Bear, Yaakov, the fifth son. Mm. And Leah said, Yahuwah has endured me in, endured me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me? Because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. Yes, How did we get there? <laughs> was in a healthy space when she reached that place where she could praise Yahuwah. But over the course, she was still watching yes. and not minding the business that pays her. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she got upset to watch her sister even conceive children through a handmaid. She didn't even have her own children. Right. So now you envied for the fact that you think that she's going to get something that she did more than what she already had right. that you wanted because she had kids. How much more can he love her if he already doesn't love you the same? Right. Like her mind played tricks on her right. and mm -hmm. she allowed that ruach to come, mm -hmm. that ruach of um, the need for acceptance come to come back on the her. need for acceptance. Right. Sevenfold. Sevenfold. She, had, she had that strong man on her. This right. now, because now the spirit of competition, the right. spirit of pride, the right. spirit of bitterness, and now you way back where you started, you done circled them out. How many times have we circled this mountain? Come on. Just she always felt. She is me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it real. Keep it real. Go ahead, Mom. She always felt like she was the one. Mm -hmm. 
always felt rejected. So right. she always felt that loss. Right. You know. Let me cut this up. All right, y'all online, y'all want to say something? I feel sorry for Leah. It had to have been hard right. sitting there watching your husband just bond over your sister. And yes. even though you, you got to a place where you was content with where you were in your hula, but it, it had to be hard day after day. He's just ignoring you. Except right. when he wanted to have babies. Because that had to have been hard. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. right. We can see that, most definitely. Anybody else want to come in? Let's open it up. So. All right. A lot of, uh, Go ahead. Can I say this real quick? Please I do. a lot of uh, Hebrew Israelites um, buying into this Isaiah 4 and 1. So I'm, I'm hoping that Yahuwah does a new thing. We don't have to worry about that, but um, yeah, I see a lot of people doing this, and it, and it mm. really can cause a lot of problems. Right, right, yeah. most definitely, and cause a lot of problems. But we just see, you know, it's just it's sad to see what's going on, you know, in the scriptures and see what's happening, and um, even just dealing with the spirit of uh, rejection and how um, you just got to be on guard, mm -hmm. even when it's like now we're going through the season of Aruka and getting healings and all that type of stuff, but there'll be another season and if you haven't internalized and keep your eyes vigilant, you'll right. find yourself back in the same cycle, mm -hmm. needing this with Aruka and healing again because mm -hmm. you want focus afterwards. So that's, that's, that's good. That's good. Oh, that's good. I was just going to say one more thing. Go oh, ahead, yes, sis. <laughs> it just reminds me of what you're just saying that um, if he says he's going to do a new thing mm -hmm. and we're going through healing and so forth, why? I, I can't I can't really fathom. It doesn't really make sense to me anyway mm -hmm. that he would have uh, two to three to four women to one man. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just can't. Put, wrap my head around that. So if we're going through a ruka, I, I, I'm thinking that you know, if you say he's going to do a new thing, and I'm thinking, you know, with you talking about twelve tribes and all these people from the four corners of the earth, it's got to be enough for everybody. Everybody. You know, they all <laughs> scriptures you know it's it's transparent you see it with both you see it um problems with a monogamous monogamous relationship and then you also see problems mm -hmm. with um uh polygamous relationships mm -hmm. it just the book just expresses and shows you the real now that's why i love the scripture so much because it ain't got no image it's trying mm -hmm. to betray because if i'm writing this book i'm gonna leave some stuff out mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you feel me? Nah, that ain't everybody's business. Right. Nobody don't need to know about that part. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you writing a book about your life, you ain't gonna put everything in that book. Right. <laughs> but the the the, the ruach gonna expose everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's it's just one of them things where, you know, you gotta allow the Most High to be um, the Most High. You know, a lot of people are trying different things, and I don't want this to go into a. Um, a debate a thing about polygamy or no polygamy, right? Uh, that could be handled another time uh, going through the scriptures, but we ain't finna do that uh, now. Um, but we do see both aspects in the in the culture or in the scriptures. We see monogamous relationships and then we see polygamous relationships. We see um, things, problems happening a lot of the polygamous relationships but also we still see problems happening in the monogamous relationships. 
and we can look at certain things according to prophecy. And men just trying to do these things and establish this stuff in today's time in America, man, you to me you'd have lost your mind to try to do something like that. Mm. Uh it's just anyway. But that's something for another day when we actually uh, uh to go over scriptures and break scriptures down to be able to run these things uh through. Because one thing we don't do is um, we don't kick against what's in the scripture. We don't mm -hmm. kick, kick against what the Most High allowed, what we was birthed out, out of also too. Mm -hmm. I just know for me, my house, and for rebirth, we about one man and one woman. Hallelujah. We don't knock nobody else. If you want to go do that, go do all you and have at it. But this ministry right here, <laughs> we about one man and one woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> but it, we will have a time, you know, where we'll leave the emotions to the side and we'll just go through the scriptures and let the scriptures speak. But us here, we looking for the most high. If you got to drop a man for y'all single women out of the Shamaim. <laughs> I ain't never leaving a rebirth. Never leaving. He going to do it. <laughs> we ain't going to take none of y'all in our bosom. So <laughs> he go create. <laughs> Hallelujah. He go create. He, he go send them. But I tell you, boy, if, if I got the body, have to do like Abraham did. Like, hey, that's right. L.A.A.'s off. <laughs> go in there and find me some men. Right. <laughs> we got some good women down here. Find me some men. Hallelujah. Right. Even if we got to go to the... No, nah, I ain't going to say that because I don't want none of y'all. Let me get back on. Yeah. <laughs> get back on point. Get back on point. All right, let's go. All right, verse 20. Who was reading? It was you, Mama. Uh, All right, it's okay. back at somebody else's turn. Oh. Rock on. Somebody. Or it's Uncle Boria. Who went after Mama? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah. 21 right there. 21, okay. And afterwards, she bare a daughter and called her Dinah. And... Yahuwah remembered Raquel and Yahuwah hearkened to her and opened her womb and she conceived and bare a son and said, Yahuwah has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Yosef and said, Yahuwah shall add to me another son. And mm -hmm. it came to pass when Raquel had born Yosef that Yaakov said unto Laban, send me away that I may go unto mine own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that Yahuwah hath blessed me, blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. All right, that's good. That's good. So let's go over this. Let's go to Isaiah 35. And then it's going to lay it all out. More, I had to think. Not Isaiah 35, I'm sorry. Genesis 35. I had a question ahead. before we get there. Don't you think that Leia may have been a little tunnel vision? You will bless our former, like, grew her. But I don't think you can spend, like, all those years together. I don't think... This is my personal belief. Obviously, it's not a script that they didn't have a relationship out of them having children. Like there had to be some times where you could be sitting and she's cooking dinner and y'all have a joke yeah, or something, laughing course. about the cows or something. I don't know what they were right, doing right, at the time. Right. But right, I don't think there's no way you can you can like uh, birth that many sons and not really have a relationship. I believe she might have just been blinded because she know that he preferred Rachel and that, you know, when you get a seed stuck in your head, that's all you will see. Mm -hmm. Right? She might have great times with him where they laugh and they talk, but she always looked at Rachel in a sense as of a standard a, right, of the relationship. Right. Right. But I don't think Jacob was the type of dude that just manhandled her and just treated her nasty mm -hmm. all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not with her being the uh, the mother of his children. And birthed it that much, you know. Um, right, I don't believe that. That's why I was wondering, because I feel like if that's if that's your portion, then she probably could have had a better experience in the marriage if she would have focused on building their relationship. Right. They right. learned about 
he has to love her the way that he loves right. Raquel. Because they're not, you're not even the same person. Right. So it's, now I ain't sharing no man, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's probably difficult. I like, uh, was it Kim? One of the sisters saying, it's hard, it's hard to believe that that's, when you have to be in that situation or the situation was like that, that you can't feel a way about your husband, mm-hmm. especially in culture. When we grow up in culture, even in the Western world, you going to get married to your man and that's your man. Right. You know, now she got to share it with her sister who technically she was never supposed to be right. his wife. So it is kind of sad. Yeah. But praise y'all that she she bore our kids and everything. Hallelujah. All right, so let, let's go over Leah, Leah children again. Who was uh, Laban daughters? Rachel. Leah, Rachel. Rachel. Leah, Rachel. All right, let's yeah. go over Leah's children. Reuben. Reuben. Simeon. 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 Levi. 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 Judah. 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 Then who? Issachar and Zebulon, right? And then Leah, that means she bore how many? What, what is that? Six. Six. That's six. That's six? Mm-hmm. All right, then Leah's handmaiden was who? Zilphah. Who did Zilphah have? Dan. 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 Asher. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Zilphah had that, but I'm missing Gad and Asher. Gad and Asher. Gad and Asher. Gad and Asher. You know, Rachel stepped on the scene before Gad and Asher came, and her handmaiden was who? Bill. Bill. And she she birthed who? Dan. 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 All right. Who was Leah's girl? Dana. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. And then Rachel uh, womb was open. And then who did she birth? Joseph. 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 And then we are gonna later on see if she birthed who? Benjamin. Benjamin. Y'all mean? So now you you get the rundown when you go to Genesis thirty five and twenty three. Mm-hmm. And I read that, it'll show you everything. Okay. But it's showing you the birth of our nation and all what we went through in the midst of it. Genesis 35, starting at verse 23. I read it. Now the sons of Leah is Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Mm. Verse 24. Now the sons of uh, Rachel is Joseph. And Benjamin, if you look at the scriptures, you'll notice that it, it, it'll it show you the ages and the lineages of the people by who it names first. Mm-hmm. So that's why it has Leah named before Rachel, because Leah was older than Rachel. Mm-hmm. So now the sons of Rachel is Joseph and Benjamin. Mm-hmm. Then the sons of Bihar, which is Rachel's handmaid, is Dan and Naphtali. Then the sons of Zephyr, which is Leah's handmaid, is Gad and Asher. And these are the sons of Jacob, which was born unto him in Padat, Padanaram, wherever that is. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Go ahead, Mama. I'm sorry. I'm I didn't hear you. Okay. All right, so anybody want to uh, just comment on um, what we talked about today that's online? What do y'all think about it? Well, for um, Jacob not to, not to have been, uh, not to have wanted Leah, I mean, he kept coming back. <laughs> <laughs> it's true now. <laughs> true. It must have been all right. He likes something about it. Something about it. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Anybody else? Let me stop sharing the screen. Well, I mean, well, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We, we had problems from the jump. From the jump. Mm-hmm. And then we can see, you know, where, I mean, why the group is so important. Right. Mm-hmm. The, the drama impacts the DNA and the sperm and the egg, and so it's passed down and passed down. And to, to, to realize that 
it wasn't necessarily the captivity that made us broken in some areas. Right, in some areas, right. The, the captivity was more of a complete uh, destruction of the uh, family of the husband and the wife and the children and the way we relate to each other continuously. But us as a nation, you know, we see from it, from the inception, the issues, you know, that we have. And what I always try to do, I try to find myself in it. Because I want to always be able to take something. If this is where I came from, this is my roots. And now I know all, we as a people and me myself, we have to be careful of what rejection or what acceptance I'm trying to find. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I have to look back over my life and see what I have experienced to see what it put in me. And then now I'm realizing that all these type of things uh, have been in us like Leah. Can you see that in our sisters mm -hmm. where they're looking for love? trying to find that love of yes. Jacob in every man that they can find. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Can you see that within our sisters, that envying of each other or competition with each yes. other? Then you see it play out in the sons, mm -hmm. how the sons dealt with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you see all the problems of the nation Same right thing. here. Same thing. Right. Wow. So it's just, it's, it's something when you go back and look at it. Go ahead. I have an observation about um, idols with this, other gods. Mm. Um, it's the same as with Jacob and Esau. There was that whole thing about one was interested in the most high and, and being available to him and wanted it, and the other one wanted the world or something else for themselves, mm -hmm. worship, whatever. Here with these two women, um, they at some point each one of them came to the place where they thought about the most high and turned their face towards the most high. But all the other times they were in they were a competition, like, and the father also, uh, Laban, he was dealing with the, the rules of another God, another. Right. The ancient system. Right. So it's almost like one system and the nature of that system, how it's put against the system and the order and the nature of the most high. And how it how it impacts each one and what the outcome turned out to be. Hallelujah. Mm, that's good. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. that's good. Oh, oh, I, had, oh, I had one observation. Um, when Leah was that, that was her right as a wife of for him to, you know, give her the opportunity to bear a son. Right. Just got, like, because he, I mean, it would like if that was something he could skip, I guess he could, but that would be against, I guess, the function of having a wife. Right. Right. That's good. He could have had her clean in the house. <laughs> no, he had them handmaids for that. <laughs> y'all better leave Leo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all even say y'all better leave Leo alone now. That's our mama now. Our mama. I'm thankful for my time, guys. Stop! You stop it! You shouldn't have told him. You stop it! Shay? Yes, sir, Elder. Yeah, uh, one of the things I was uh, noticing is that how, oh, yeah, yeah, I can uh, use something that is imperfect right. and turn it into something good. Mm. Uh, uh, Jacob's mother was a deceiver. Right. Jacob was a deceiver. Right. And his, un his uncle Laban was a deceiver. Right. And, and one of the daughters also was a deceiver because she stole her father's uh, idol. Mm -hmm. Rachel. And when he came looking mm -hmm. for it, she denied it, you know, knowing about it. Mm -hmm. She lied. 
But yet, it's out of all these chaos that God, that he makes a people for himself. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now think about that. Sometimes, boy, we we I be we be looking, be like, boy, most high, why in the world you chose us? But most high, that's why you know it ain't never a situation that he ain't got a plan for. He took a well, this is a dysfunctional family, and made a whole Kodesh, perfect nation of priests and kings, and then he bind himself to us. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's that's crazy to me. Yeah. But I thank him for it. Probably. Then notice how, how hard headed he know we is. We are. He said in Ezekiel, he said, listen, the only reason I'm coming to get y'all <laughs> is because my name's sake. Yeah. I want to make everybody have respect, put respect on my name with a K. Mm -hmm. Respect <laughs> on my name. Right. That's why I'm, I know I know them, them my children, they're crazy. I know they're crazy, but because of my name, I'm coming, and then I'm going to make all the nations, because I'm going to be sanctified in them before the nations. But so before he come to get us, he going to be he going to make all the nations bow and respect us. Mm. Ain't that amazing? Before he comes. Before he comes. That's what Ezekiel say. He said, "I'm gonna be. I'm gonna sanctify them before the eyes of the nations." Mm. And the nation's going to get the reward. They're going to see the reward of the wicked ones mm -hmm. before we leave. Hallelujah. So I praise the most high. It ain't based on us. Because if it was by me, yeah. oh, goodness, I don't know if it'll come. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it's for his own name's sake. Yes. I just, Hallelujah. my job is to purify myself till we come. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so um, y'all yeah, just go back and, and read it. Some more, and even if you want to, uh, because it's going to transition into the sons, you'll begin to see where the sons begin to be dysfunctional. You'll begin to see the envy of the sons now and what's happening. So from what was going on with the mothers, but this is our job as the Avengers, because we are the Avengers of this. So our job is to truly be each other's bone. In each other's flesh. Hallelujah. And we taking away the competition. We taking away the envy. We replacing it for love. We replacing it oh. for we uh, through accepting each other, through loving each other, yeah. through having unconditional unity. Well, I ain't gonna say unconditional unity because if you do, if you, <laughs> yeah, you see, yeah. Let me rewind that. Yeah. But <laughs> through all costs. We try to within this nation to stay unified because at the end of the day, I love the way that statement was saying. I believe we need to pick up and start saying that. You are my. Let's say that together. You are my bone. You are my, my bone. bone. You are my flesh. You are my let's flesh. Let's look at each other in this room. You are my bone. You are my bone. You are my flesh. You are my flesh. Hallelujah. So let us begin to walk that out in the bloodline. We love y'all. We was a little over time, but I hope this was good. I hope this be able to keep um, our matriarchs. We love all our mothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We'll see y'all on the next one. We're going to say shalom online and shalom in the house. And shalom for those that's going to later see this on YouTube. Shalom, shalom.